Yo, get this guy here. Hey, so first off, I apologize if the sound's a little bit weird. I'm using my phone to record this video. I didn't charge any of my camera batteries, so I'm without my DSLR, but we're gonna make it work. Also, this is a how to build a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system. But if you haven't seen the basics, we've done 5.1 system, 7.1, 5.1.2. Now we're doing 5.1.4. So if you need to catch up, there's a playlist down below called How To Revamped, where you can catch up on all my how-to videos. Let's get into it. How do you set up a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system? Well, assuming you know where all those speakers go, front and left, center, front, right, our rear speakers are not actually in the rears, they are on the sides of you. So you have your front speakers, left, center, and right. Then you have your surround speakers, which are actually your side surrounds in a 5.1.4. The point one is the subwoofer. Now I say point one, but you can have as many subwoofers as you want, two, three, four, five, but to keep it simple, point one is the subwoofer. Put that where it sounds best, especially if you have multiple subs. The point four are the Dolby Atmos speakers, the speakers that are meant to be above your head. So in the 5.1.2, we discussed that it's best to have your speakers in the front. If you're gonna have Atmos speakers, have them in the front, but in a 5.1.4, there's four Dolby Atmos speakers, so you want a pair to be up front and a pair to be just slightly behind you, well above your head, at least eight feet, right? Not too far away, unless you have some really powerful speakers, but you want them to be above your head. There is a rule of thumb when it comes to setting up a Dolby Atmos system. You can't just place them anywhere above you. There are strategic places for them to be placed so that they sound the way they're supposed to when things pan from front to back. So assuming you have all of your first five speakers, front, left, center, right, rears, all set up and your subwoofer set up, now we want to place our Atmos speakers. Now there's a lot of speakers you can use. You can use bookshelf speakers and put them up on the wall or get a, a bracket, get a mount and angle them down at you. You can have Atmos speakers on top of your, your floor standing speakers or your bookshelf speakers and aim them up to the ceiling and they will come down towards your listening position. You can do it that way. You can even have your Atmos speakers on the side wall. So if you don't have the ability to put them above you, way above the wall or on the ceiling, you can actually have them on the side of the wall firing towards you that way and that will give you a good idea of an Atmos sound. On the back of your receiver or preprocessor, you're gonna see an output called either height one, height two, height three, height four. It may be called Atmos one, Atmos two, Atmos three, Atmos four, whatever you're just called, you wanna connect your speakers to this. If you're using an, an external amplification, then that's also the same. Connect it to height one, height two, height three, height four. Make sure in your receiver, you have it set up to 5.1.4. Under configurations, you can change what speakers are being powered. For example, my Anthem AVM70 allows me to change from 5.1 to 5.1.2 to 5.1.4 to 7.1. Make sure you're in the right configuration, which is 5.1.4. Five speakers on the floor, a subwoofer, and then your four Atmos speakers. So make sure you make those changes inside your receiver before running calibration because your receiver needs to know how many speakers you uh, intend to use. So plug your Atmos speakers to their respective inputs and make sure you remember height one is front left, height two is front right, height three is rear left, height four is rear right. And it's ideal to get them in the ceiling. If you live in a home that's your own or maybe your landlord doesn't care if you put holes in the ceiling, it's probably most ideal to put your speakers in the ceiling. I live in a home now, I've been living in it just shy of a year now. I have made my own holes in the ceiling to put dedicated Atmos speakers in and although it was the scariest thing in my life, it was well worth it. They're placed really well. They're about seven, eight feet from my head when I'm sitting down. So not bad whatsoever. You wanna try to put them in the ceiling. And you want to make sure that they are slightly in front of the front speakers. So if my front speakers are here, you want your Atmos speakers to be just a little bit uh, in front of your front speakers. That way you have some separation between your front speakers and your Atmos speakers. Otherwise, it'll just sound like a big wall of sound, which is fine, but you want a little bit of separation so that you can hear when things are actually above you flying from front to back or maybe from 
right to left, right? You want that sensation. So when you're placing your speakers, there are guides for this. You can go to Dolby Atmos website, you can go to Dolby's website and they have diagrams. There's a lot of videos on how to place Dolby Atmos speakers, but typically you want them to be just a little bit in front of your front speakers and about as wide as your front speakers are as well. So not too much wider than the front stage, not any narrower. You want them to be as wide as your front speakers are and have them maybe six to 12 inches or maybe even more in front of your front speakers, depending on how your room is set up. The same is true for the rear speakers, the rear Atmos. You want them to also be a few feet or so in front of your surround speakers. Now, I know that you may not have surround speakers back here, but you still want your Atmos speakers to be placed. Imagine you had rear speakers in the back. Where would you place those? Imagine that for yourself and then put your Atmos speakers just a little bit ahead of them. You want them to be a little bit behind you, not too far away. You don't want them to be over top of you. You want them to be a little bit behind you in the ceiling. That way, when things pan across front to back, left to right, they actually sound like where they're supposed to be coming from. So make sure you're doing that. Now, if you can't put your Atmos speakers in the ceiling, the next best thing to do is put your Atmos speakers up top on the wall, as high up on the wall where it meets the ceiling. That's what you wanna do. Get them high up there as you can. That way you still get that height sensation. Unfortunately, you won't get that depth per perception because they're going to be pretty far away depending on your space. But if that's all you have, don't sweat it. Make it happen. Put those speakers way up there on the wall as high as you can above your front speakers so that you still have that sense of height. Do the same thing for your rear Atmos speakers. This is if you're going to put them on wall. Your last resort is putting them on top of your speakers. Maybe you have Dolby Atmos enabled speakers that have like a little curve to them. Put them on top of your speakers. That way they fire up towards the ceiling and then that sound will ricochet back down to your general listening position. That way you still get that sense of height. You still get that Atmos. It's not perfect. It's very hard to do, especially in the rear. But if you don't have any other choice but to put them on top, make it happen. You might want to turn them up a little bit louder than normal because they have a far distance to travel. And depending on how tall your ceilings are or what your ceilings are made out of, you may have a lot of diffusion of that sound. It may not make it back to your listening position. So you may have to crank the Atmos section up, which is fine. Just be careful not to blow any of your speakers. So we know what our Atmos speakers are and we have a pretty good idea of where to place them. But how do we set them up in our receiver? Atmos speakers are object-based surround sound. So not a lot of information goes there, but things that you can imagine over your head will be there. Thunder, grenades being tossed over the battlefield. Maybe there's a plane going over your head. Maybe there's rain falling down. So things that are supposed to be over your head is truly all that those Atmos speakers are going to do. There's not a lot of bass that comes to those speakers either. That's why when you buy Atmos speakers, they're usually pretty small. One, because you don't want a giant speaker hanging over your head anyway. But two, not a lot of big boomy bass comes from the Atmos section. Or if it does, it's usually routed to the subwoofer or maybe even the front speakers anyway. So you don't need a big speaker. This is good, but you wanna make sure you set it up in your receiver or preprocessor correctly. Typically when you run calibration, most like Odyssey, Direct Live, Anthem, um, so on and so forth, they get this correct, but go back and double check your crossovers. Make sure that your receiver didn't set your Atmos crossover to 70 hertz or 60 or 50 hertz. They don't play that much bass. And if you bought an Atmos enabled on speaker, they're not going to be able to handle all that bass anyway. So make sure that in your receiver, you make sure that they're set to small and then cross them over, usually 90, 100 hertz. 80 is probably the lowest I would go for an Atmos speaker. Even if it's in-wall, even if it's dedicated, I would go 80 hertz or higher and make sure that all the bass that's there gets routed to a speaker that can really give you that thunder, no pun intended. The last thing that I'll say about Atmos, which you may have experienced, if you have an Atmos system already set up in your home theater, you may have been like me one day where I was like, you know, my speakers are good, they sound great, the movies are awesome, but I'm having trouble hearing my Atmos speakers. They're placed well, they're good speakers. Why am I having so much trouble hearing them? Me personally, and this goes for sound bars, it goes for dedicated home theaters, I always crank up my Atmos speakers just a little bit louder than everything else. 
A lot of times your Atmos speakers are the furthest away from you, depending on your room setup, right? If you have a huge room, then maybe your front stage is further away, or maybe your rear speakers are farther away. Maybe you have vaulted ceilings or just really tall ceilings, and maybe your Atmos speakers are very far away. For me, my Atmos speakers in every setup that I've had have been the farthest speaker away from where I sit. So naturally, I turn them up a little bit higher than everything else. This is why you want to make sure your crossover is set at a good crossover. If you have your crossover too low and you turn your Atmos speakers too high, you may damage them or you may be taxing your receiver amplifier way too much. Maybe exhausting it, giving it too much power and it's just running out of gas. So you want to be careful with this. But I personally turn up my Atmos speakers maybe three or four dBs higher than all my other speakers just to make sure that I hear it because sometimes I don't. If there's a lot of things going on, I, I will turn it up. So naturally I do. You're more than welcome to see if it works for you. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Another thing that you can do is add some acoustic treatment around the room. Atmos speakers being up there in the ceiling, they're gonna bounce everywhere. They're not just gonna come straight down to your seat. They're gonna go every which way. So if you can, you wanna angle them towards you and then get some acoustic treatment to help the echo in your room. If you clap your hands and you have a lot of echo, well then you can imagine your sound is just bouncing everywhere. So to help your Atmos speakers sound better, get some acoustic treatment to tighten up the room and try to angle your speakers towards where you sit so that that beam of sound is mostly going to you and not scattered all the way around the room. All right, guys, that's going to do it for how to set up a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system. Remember, we've done all the how-tos of how to set up a receiver, how to set up a 5.1 basic home theater, how to do a 7.1. So if you want to know how we got this far, make sure you go back into my playlist and check out all the other videos beforehand. Also, we're getting ready to fire up a Q&A with K-Face guys. So leave me some questions down below that you guys have in the comment section. And I will answer them live in a video coming up here in about a week or two. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. And we will see you in the next video. K-Face guy out. Peace.